Developer Hangar 13's work on Mafia Definitive Edition is easily the most complex piece of the puzzle in updating its Mafia trilogy for modern consoles. As a ground up remake of the 2002 original built on the studio's latest proprietary engine, it's the most ambitious. Certainly, it's far more so than the Mafia 2 remaster a few months past, which improved visuals but fundamentally kept the original code in place. Today then, we have a new trailer of this Mafia remake that shows an 18 year old game, its world and characters radically transformed. Every aspect is reimagined with a new lighting model, materials, motion capture and use of physics. As we sweep through the newly rendered city of Lost Heaven, it's clearly a night and day difference over the original. So how is this achieved? How much of Mafia Definitive Edition is new and how much of the source is kept intact? No doubt the footage is impressive. We see reworked cutscenes and cityscapes, all a jump ahead of even the more recent Mafia 3 in visual quality. Thanks to its improved lighting, plus changes in approach to its facial motion capture, something I'll touch on later, it's often unrecognisable at points. And yet, for long-time fans, it's good to see it sticks to the script. A sports racing mission makes a brief appearance. There's a shootout at a pizzeria, and another inside a church, all memorable points of the original game. Regardless, a bulk of the trailer focuses on a mission called A Trip to the Country. It's an extended gameplay slice that has leading man Tommy show off the game's reworked combat on a dark rain-soaked farm. Really, it serves as a useful look at Hangar 13's direction for the project overall, revealing a new approach to cinematics and the game flow itself. Now, I had a chance to speak with the game's associate director, Alex Cox, who explained the thinking behind the project. A big part of the reason to remake the original game, he explains, is to make it palatable for modern audiences all round. He describes how Mafia 2, by comparison, didn't need the same level of treatment either. And that makes sense. The sequel still feels relatively modern in style as an Xbox 360 era title. Its remaster on PS4 and Xbox One needed a less involved touch-up as a result to bring its art up to date while the cover-based shooting still holds up. Visually speaking, it added new materials, parallax occlusion maps on snow, alongside a boosted resolution for consoles. Frame rate issues and glitches aside at launch, Mafia 2 Remaster holds up without being entirely rebuilt. Meanwhile, of course Mafia 3 is the most recent entry and for a trilogy package can be left as is. Looking back at the original Mafia from 2002 then, it's fair to say there's more work to bring it up to speed. Originally developed by Illusion Softworks, of which some members have joined Hangar 13, it was one of the first 3D open world crime games to hit PC. It was impressive for its day too, sporting nicely detailed car models, physics handling and a huge city to drive around. All the cutscenes were also voice acted, rendered in engine to tell the story of a taxi driver turned mob member. Honestly, going back to it today, it's that script that holds up best from everything in the package, though other aspects do show their age. In action, the difficulty level could often be extreme. You'd start off by chauffeuring gangsters around, making sure not to speed or skip red lights while police cars are in view, or it's mission over. As a PC first game, all of this driving had to be awkwardly handled with a keyboard and mouse at the time, not ideal by any means. As for the shootouts, it was more old school. You'd use the environment to manually take cover, guarding every angle closely and flanking at just the right moment. Modern design sensibilities are thrown right out the window for this. You have no automatic health regen for one. Every hit to your health carries to the next area, meaning you have to play a near perfect game. All combined, the original Mafia is unforgiving in a way most games aren't today. Frustrating in part, but also a brutal challenge once you understand the rules. And the sight of it was certainly a lot nicer than a baseball bat to my head. For all its qualities, it's hard to overlook the technical limits of the original. The basic polygonal meshes for its characters, the low resolution shop windows, the pop-in on New Heaven's Horizon, all make it a product of its time. Combined with a simplistic enemy AI and third person controls, 
an updated version needed more than just a surface level reworking. And so the jump to the definitive edition is really what was needed. The cover based shooting mechanics of Mafia 2 and 3 make a return, where controller support is this time factored in from the beginning. Everything in terms of its world design gives it a kind of consistency with the other two games as a result. Thank Christ, we gotta get to him. Swapping between the original and remake, what a difference 18 years makes. What I found fascinating in my exchange with the studio was discovering how certain aspects evolve over even Mafia 3. This is 2K Check's engine as used for all its games, but there's a through line, a DNA here, that can be traced even back to the original game's code. Of course, much of it has been overhauled in its entirety to suit multi-platform development, new rendering techniques, but traces can be found. As far as what's new, the lighting model is put front and center. All materials in the game take advantage of this, and while physically based rendering can't be confirmed just yet, so many of the materials have a near photorealistic look. The reflective polish of its vehicles, the volumetric fog that fills the air between the city's skyscrapers, everything is a huge leap on Mafia 3. All of this has a knock-on benefit to Mafia's cutscenes too. Side by side with the original games, so much is recut and framed, though the story beats are clearly the same. Now, it's not always possible to get a watertight match side by side, but here's an example that works, just about. Motion capture uses a newer approach compared to Mafia 3 with updated capture equipment for its cast. A new rig for scanning faces means each character resembles their real life counterpart more accurately. As a result, every facial tick, every wrinkle is captured faithfully and plugged into the engine. From there, each model is mapped with materials for skin and the return is often uncannily close. Now based on the footage so far, there's a convincing reaction to oncoming light. It's something we'll have to investigate for the final release, set for September 25th, but it's hugely impressive. Another standout point is the reflections. Car bodies and wet floors are in focus for the trip to the country mission, and every reflection is punctuated by lightning flashes. Now asking the team on how they're rendered, I can confirm ray tracing is not on show here. All signs point to a screen space form of reflections instead, which does mean less accurate occlusion for objects in front of the mirror image. Still, who knows what the future may hold? On that point, the team was tight-lipped on any plans for next gen when I asked, but still the settings and the SSR implementation here work well. Every set piece, from the shootout across the barns to the on-rails car chase at the end, sports settings that fall in line with what I'd expect of a high-end PC. It'll be curious to see how this game holds up on current gen systems for sure. All round, Mafia Definitive Edition is shaping up to be a showcase for open world games this year. It's also, realistically, a project that should have its sights on next gen even if there's no actual confirmation just yet. A question mark does hang over how faithful it is to the original two. The difficulty level and the nature of gameplay are so, so different based on this showing. Tweaks are made to the pacing of its plot with enlarged mission environments and reordering of events. The change is equatable to Resident Evil 2 Remake in some ways, a story you remember but with new design sensibilities and cutting edge technology. The turnout? A reveal trailer with a genuinely huge wow factor, and I just hope the full game matches this promise when it lands in September. The trilogy does appear to be completing in style soon, and Mafia Definitive Edition is the best the series has looked so far. But that's all I have for this quick early look. If you did find it useful, feel free to like or subscribe, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notifications as any new video lands. To get a high quality version of this video, check out our Patreon at digitalfoundry.net, and to get in touch directly, just use Twitter. But from me for now, thanks for watching. Two squad cars on us!